Um, hi. It's good to see you. So, Hila, go along. Go ahead. Yes, so I am delighted to welcome Celine Cousteau here with us today. Um, she is a socio-environmental advocate and public figure known for her work as a documentary film director, designer and explorer. She is a frequent panelist at, at the United Nations and helped to found both cause-centric productions and the Board of Outdoor Film Fellowship. Um, Celine, it's a pleasure to have you and um, please go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, I, I love David's presentation and I've never been in the same sentence as Lego, so it's an exciting day for me. Um, I'm, I'm a big Lego fan and um, I definitely feel like we need to engage young people, but adults can still have fun. So I build Legos on a regular basis with my son. I'm definitely gonna look into that program. Um, we need to make education fun. We need to make climate change um, a part of everyday um, conversation. And, and I think the education component of it is crucial. I don't wanna put too much weight on the next generation because we are more than responsible for actually um, following through in mitigating climate change, in working on different social justice issues and alleviating poverty. Um, so I don't want the next generation to feel that there's a big weight on their shoulders, but they are more active now than any other generation has been. And thanks to platforms like this, um, thanks to social media, thanks to all of the movements that are happening, we are actually hearing young people's voices. And for somebody like me, who's in a family of three generations, of environmentalists and humanitarians, explorers and filmmakers. Um, I find it really heartening and inspiring to see young people today getting so involved um, and want to find new ways and want to continue keeping young people involved because your voices are important, your voices are heard, we are listening um, and we wanna help support what it is that you feel that needs to get done. My main project uh, for the past Wow, 10 years has been in the Brazilian Amazon with indigenous peoples. Uh, it's a project called Tribes on the Edge. The film Tribes on the Edge is a 72 minute completely independent film that was the result of the request of the indigenous peoples of the Javari territory for me to tell their story to the world. I was there in 2007 on a documentary with my father called Return to the Amazon, which aired on PBS and at that time met the indigenous peoples of the Javari who were dealing and still are dealing with a lot of um, climate related issues as well as illegal activities. And when they asked me to tell their story to the world, it was in a request for people to know that they exist, that they want to live beyond survival. And our relationship to them, I think is something that is very important for people to understand because the Amazon may seem far away. And yes, we hear on the news that the Amazon is burning and COVID has arrived in indigenous populations, but do we fully understand what our relationship with the ecosystem and those people are? So Tribes on the Edge really outlines what's happening in that territory. And I'm gonna do the same. I'll share my screen and, um, and show you a little bit of uh, one, the images that we have um, and the story uh, that I am sharing there, let me see. Can you all see the screen? There we go, perfect, thank you for that. <laughs> um, I will go ahead and do the best I can. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and show you my whole presentation. I'm not gonna try to do anything fancy. Um, if, you, if you see here the, uh, the shadow overlay of the United States, you get an idea of the expanse of the Amazon basin, um, in which case you can fully understand how large this ecosystem is. But it is very fragile and it is getting deforested at an incredibly high rate. Um, obviously, we've seen the forest fires increasing in, um, in the past years, but the forest fires are nothing new. It's just that we're actually paying attention again um, and, um, and we're beginning really to understand that this problem has been happening and it is happening at a really high rate at this, pro at, at this point. Um, deforestation isn't just due to forest fires. So if you look at this, for example, um, this slide will show you just simply what's in pink is deforestation due to palm oil. 
So if we think of um, our relationship to this ecosystem and to a place that's very far away, and we think of one product, palm oil is just an example because we can talk about palm oil, we can talk about soy production, we can talk about cattle farming. Um, and then we look at things such as mining, a lot of which is happening illegally on indigenous land as well. But then we can start to understand that our consumption is directly related to what is happening in the Amazon. So yes, it's a far away place for most of us, but everything we consume has a repercussion and has an origin somewhere on the planet and therefore has an impact somewhere on the planet. So one way we can think about this, it's like, okay, well, here's a problem, what's the solution? Solution is you avoid products that are leading to deforestation. So palm oil is one of those. Soy, unfortunately, is a very complicated one because it's not because you, you uh, converge to being vegetarian that all of a sudden everything is solved because a lot of soy is being exported to Europe to feed cattle, right? So we have, we have that um, delicate balance to also figure out. If you look at um, indigenous land, so indigenous land um, in the Brazilian Amazon and, uh, and in the Amazon in general um, is represented here. This is all of Brazil. What you see in orange is indigenous land. There's no deforestation on indigenous land. So if you think about who are the natural guardians of these ecosystems, we need to think of them as the allies in combating climate change. So therefore protecting the environment is also about protecting people. The old thinking was people shouldn't be anywhere, they shouldn't be using any kind of natural resources. But when you're looking at indigenous people on these territories being the natural guardians of an ecosystem on which we depend, you think, okay, this is not just an environmental issue, it is a humanitarian issue. Because if their rights are being violated because of um, illegal activities on their land, it then becomes partially our problem to deal with. Um, so I, I think I urge, you know, all of us to really look at indigenous people as, as true custodians and true guardians and allies of these ecosystems on which we depend. It's a very small um, percentage of the global population that we're talking about. Four to five percent of the global population are indigenous people, yet they protect 80 percent of biodiversity. Now, we know that a healthy ecosystem, regardless of where it is, it could be the oceans, it could be mangroves and it could be the jungle. When there is biodiversity, there is an equilibrium in the ecosystem with flora and fauna. And if we're looking at indigenous land and we're looking at indigenous people as the guardians of these ecosystems, they're also the guardians of biodiversity on which we all depend. So that's something really important for us to look at. What are we willing to do to be allies? I show this slide to show people who are my bosses. Um, no matter where I am in the world, what conference I give or what talk I give, the voice that I share is on behalf of the people I work for. Now, I am not an indigenous person. I don't live in the Amazon rainforest, but I have learned what my role is as an indigenous defender and an indigenous ally. And sometimes it takes courage to take that kind of position because you will be judged because you aren't of that place or you aren't of that land. And yet what it means to be a true ally is to go out on a limb. And sometimes you have rites of passage and rites of initiation. Do not fear being judged for defending the causes you believe in, even if you do not suffer directly from those causes. Because the reality is, is everything in this world and everything on the planet is interconnected and we all have a role to play. And I would say, take the courage, take all of the courage, take all of your passion and go forward with confidence that your voice value is valued and your voice needs to be heard. My, my second role, not just as an ally, but is to create a bridge. And creating that bridge means finding ways in which I'm able to share their voices because they have very strong voices. One thing that I don't believe in is when somebody says you give voice to the voiceless, they are not voiceless. They are very powerful, they are very smart, and they are so much more connected with all of the intricacies of the natural world. What I, profess to play as a role is creating the bridge for those voices to be heard. How can we do that? One of the ways Tribes on the Edge um, has supported, besides doing the film Tribes on the Edge, which hopefully you all get to see in the new year, um, is to invite one of the indigenous representatives of the Javari territory to be at the United Nations for the Indigenous Peoples Forum, which usually happens every April, and to give place for that voice to be heard. 
I created the bridge and then I can step back. And that's something that I think we're all capable of. Um, this is a quote that I, I hope all of you are familiar with, but I will share it again, is to never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has, Margaret Mead. I think it's a quote that's really important in the day of today when we could potentially feel overpowered by the amount of information, um, perhaps overwhelmed by the negativity or how many causes there are, um, how much destruction there is. All of that has been going on. It's just that we're hearing it a lot more. We're overwhelmed with all of this content and all of this information because we're on our phones all the time and we're reading it on social media and we're getting pinged and we're getting all of these notifications. Do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. Somebody asked me one day, how can I be so optimistic? I don't know that I'm optimistic. I choose to be. I wake up in the morning and I decide, today I will be optimistic. Today I can do something. And there are days that I do more than others. On those days that I know that I'm feeling down and I can't continue to fight these big battles, take a step back and do something for yourself and do something for your surroundings. Because if you keep healing yourself and you keep reinforcing your energy, you're gonna come back a, a stronger fighter. You're gonna come back somebody who can keep fighting that battle. And I think that that's something that's really important for all of us to remember. One phrase that I keep repeating, um, something that is a bit of my motto is to not forget that you are not apart from the world, you are a part of the world. And all of us have our part to play. So even though on, on my end of things, um, I get to be out in the public and I get to be on these kinds of platforms, each one of you watching today has your part in nature and, and is completely interconnected. So keep connected with all of those people around you, keep the communication, um, highways open, keep sharing your hope and your inspiration, and do not hesitate to reach out to people who need support, ask them what they need, and see what you can do for them. So I want to thank all of you for, for being here today from the Philippines. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to also read some of these comments because I think it's really important. I would have loved to be able to have these kinds of um, exchanges more often. So Cohen, thank you for inviting me again. It's always a real pleasure to all of you watching, just keep going out there, knowing that you are a warrior for nature. Thank you so much, uh, Celine. Thank you so much for sharing your message. Um, yes, thank you so much, Celine. That was incredibly inspiring. I loved what you said about allyship and that Margaret Mead quote is one of my favorites. So <laughs> very nice to see you share that. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure.